And, you know, uh, just gone by was a conversation on what your definition of success is. Now, the gentleman that we are going to be talking to is one that I will say has been very successful when it comes to the conversation on education. Look, here's anything and everything <laughs> education. Look, I will consider myself very honored and privileged to have him and to have this conversation with him because many, many, many years ago when my um, son was very young, you know, this man presented an award to him. Now, in my home, I showed a photo to my son <laughs> and say that, look, you are so honored and privileged to have this man give you your award because he's a big man when it comes to education. That to me is success. To be in your home, other people are in their home and they have a very positive conversation about, about you. you, the yeah. impact that you are making in yeah. society. Ladies and gentlemen, our personality this morning is the former Director General, Ghana Education Service. Mr. Charles Aheto Shega. Sir, you are welcome. <laughs> you just knighted me. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Charles. Yes. <laughs> Sir Charles. Sir Charles, you know, yeah. Sir Charles yeah. Aheto Shega. And I think it's. it's Prima, have you seen his CV? Look, it's like a mile long go. David, <laughs> when I opened when I opened the document to check his CV, I almost called the producers to say that, guys, can you summarize this for us? You know, because it felt like reading to go and write an exam. God, you know, one person can have this kind of CV, and I was like, but how old is he? You I know, know, right? And he's still here. So not, much I mean, some of these things you want to somewhere. look at some ancestors. Yes, you yeah. know, and did this and that. But he is he's here. right here with us with all of this. He's achieved so, beautiful. so much, so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that Ghana is blessed to have personalities, you yeah. know, like these people who would um, offer their lives mm -hmm. in service to humanity, yeah. to Ghana yeah. and human beings, yeah. you know. And that's why we all have certain stories to tell, things mm. that he doesn't even know, yeah, the know, impact right? that he doesn't know, yeah. you know, some of us yeah. are holding on so dearly yeah. to them. Absolutely. Well, let's begin. When did it all start for you? Where were you born? When did life begin? And how was it? I was born uh, in Akimoda. Okay. Um, in fact, in a village near Akimoda. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, my brothers and sisters tell me. Incidentally, I'm older than them, but they tell me. <laughs> my, my and they say I was born in that village, and it's called Almakwedo. Okay. okay. Very near Osnase. Okay. So okay. you come through Manso, Achiankaman Kwanta, and then you come to Admakwedo. Okay. You know, I love that place very much. It's supposed to be our ancestral home. Okay. So okay. Um, that's where I was born. Okay. Uh, in the arms of my grandmother. Mm. And um, I went to school uh, with, in my father's business. I call it a business because the school belonged to my father. Okay. Oh, okay. So he set up the school. And incidentally, there's somebody here who also attended that school. Oh, really? Yes. At City? At City. <laughs> oh, Is it Hector? <laughs> Thank you very much. Ah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Hector International School. Interesting. No, and uh, that person, you know, that, now that you say it's Hector, you know the person who attended You know, Hector. Sanders was a Hector. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. And, and it, you know, he's really got fond memories of Hector yes, because yes, he really yes. talked. So tell us about Hector, you know, because um, he's always talking about... The uh, school. Primary school wow. and all that. Hector is a very wonderful school. It's, okay. one, it's one of the first private schools that emerged in this country, competing mm. with schools in Accra like Radiant Way mm. okay. and mm. uh, some of those mm. schools that, that began before even Datus and others yeah. were, were, were springing up. And uh, it was in far away Akimoda mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was so good a place to be that a lot of people even removed their children from Tema, schools in Tema, like yeah. Parents Association, mm -hmm. okay. and brought them to Akimoda. Yes, wow. the famous Hector. school. I mean, the very, very, in fact, we had a song called Hector School, the famous and all of that. <laughs> uh, we just celebrated almost 60 years mm. of, of wow. existence. Um, and we did quite well. In fact, um, another person who attended Hector, I'm sure you also know, is Dr. Grace Vediakon. Okay. Oh. Yeah, she also okay. attended mm. Hector. And mm. we have quite a lot of the people. The former statistician. Yes, the yeah. government, government statistician. statistician. Yes, she attended Hector. Mm. Okay. And uh, she comes from Odam area okay. also. So, um, and um, it has, it still exists. Yeah. Um, they are still doing a lot of very good work, okay. um, excelling, yeah. okay. um, even in the midst of some of their uh, graduates eventually growing up to set up schools to yeah. compete with Hector mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. the same environment. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, they are making very, very good progress in terms of um, education. Mm. Now, before you proceed, children. you have a very interesting birth date. Yes, I hear so. I, yeah. I, have a, I, I don't even talk about it, but I will say that um, my mother was trying to give birth to me on the 6th of March. Yeah. And I resisted it because I didn't want to belong to the colonial era. No. <laughs> so, so you I come, said, a, day come a day after independence. I wow. a new person Super. and have Super. an independent mind. In fact, my father used to say that I was... I had an independent mind. You know, and, and why not? And then, that's you know, amazing. So, so that's, yeah. that's you were born the day after, after. independence. Yes. So you started Ghana with from with the Ghana. onset. Yes. Yeah, with Ghana. <laughs> yes. And yeah. saw and, and, and saw all the challenges mm -hmm. growing up mm. and all, yeah. going through all the motions Super. after this time. Yeah. So after mm -hmm. Hector? So after Hector, um I went to Winneba Secondary School. Okay. I always call it the best school in Ghana. Um arguably. Good. And, uh, yeah. Yes, when you said. Um and um, it was a very, very good school. Mm. Winnibar is a very good school. And uh, it looks like um, before my time and even during my time, we had um, individuals who had attended Hector, all of whom saw how the students were very, very disciplined. Mm. In fact, discipline was the heart of Winnibar yeah. Secondary School. I mean the school didn't have a, a boundary. And mm. those days, this mm. side, we yeah. don't build, you know, and now they have yeah. built walls, walls. around mm. all our mm. schools, partly as a basis of um, identifying our demarcations. Mm. But, but we all knew that the school didn't have walls, yeah. but everybody knew that there was an imaginary line you can't cross. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So, so you won't get near that imaginary mm. line. Mm. So that wow. the school became very, very disciplined that in a lot of the things. Yeah. Um, that, uh, and I think mm. I, I know there's an old student here again from Winnipeg Secondary School. I don't know whether she has moved out, but she used to be here. Okay. Uh, what's her name? I've forgotten her name. I mean, she was not there in my time. Mm. <laughs> she, used, she used to read the news um, from the lady who was here okay. in, in, uh, in City. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so. We'll find out. Yes, <laughs> find out. You, 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 I know some of the people remember yeah. her name. So it was a good school, and um, we, we, we went through the motions. We, one of the best schools in um, in Central Region yeah. Zone B, mm. competing very well with Atamensis uh, Atamensis School, yeah. Swedish so Secondary School. school. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, we call them our girls. We beat them every time <laughs> in hockey and all of the things yeah. that they used to do, and and it was exciting mm. you know, to have mm. uh, them all around. We, we could go to Swedish, they could come to our place. We laugh, we fight, mm. we do so many things for sports, but mm. we were so. Um, going together as yeah. um, schools within the mm. same districts. So we had some Super. time. Then after that, mm -hmm. um, I did a number of world wars. You know, when we talk about world, world wars, wars. Go and uh, come back. Uh, uh, world right. wars. <laughs> world <laughs> wars. Rewrite. Uh, 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 Rewrite re re it <laughs> after home five, you yeah. know. Then I went to Akim Sodru Secondary School okay. Okay. Uh, for uh, one of the world wars. Mm. It was from there that I took a stint in a Palm Secondary School. Okay. So I went to a Palm and you know, from Winneba to a Palm yeah. was uh, like, they were like um, rivals. Yeah. You know, so coming yeah. from Winneba to a Palm, you were seen differently, yeah. you were seen like somebody <laughs> who didn't belong and all of yeah. that, you know, but somehow uh, my heart was still very much with Winneba more than Mm. Uh, a palm because of uh, various reasons I can't mention on air. Uh, really? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, various reasons I can't mention on air. But okay. a palm sure. was still a very, very good school. Well, did Madame come from I'm sure Winnipeg? No. Ma ma Madame uh, uh, comes from Tamale Secondary School. Okay. okay. But you know, before that, we had a very nice relationship with somebody from Winnipeg Secondary School. Ah, so, that explains uh -huh. it. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you have limited it to that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. You've limited it to that. <laughs> no, no, among that's other things. One. Among um, other um, things. Among other yeah. things. So yeah. that's why I like uh, Winneba uh, Secondary School and all sort of, mm. I played down mm. on Apam mm. a little. But Apam was a very exciting time of my life. Okay. Uh, yeah. Great. I Great. missed their 70th anniversary and I was very, very sad. Mm. You know. um, so from there I went to, um, I did uh, some more wars okay. uh, <laughs> at advanced level yeah. okay. and then went over to University, uh, to University of Cape Coast okay. Okay. and I majored in history and uh, religious studies mm -hmm. and we did our normal education program and all of that. So after that, um, national service, 
And the national service years were quite interesting mm. okay. uh, and very challenging. I thought I was going to teach in Wesley Girls. Mm -hmm. I actually started teaching in Wesley Girls for some time. Some of the old girls know me there. And then eventually I ended up in the Upper East region. Oh, wow. okay. And I was posted to Boku Secondary School. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So I said, well, I'll go. You mm -hmm. know, it, was, it didn't excite the girls in Wesley Girls at all because they thought I was a good teacher. <laughs> so I left, went to Boku, and uh, I, you know, I went to Boku and I compared Boku and Akim Odan. And I thought, mm -hmm. oh, Boku is like Akim Odan. So okay. why am wow. I in a hurry to go anywhere okay. else? People were crying and screaming. They wanted to come back. So I spent about 10 years in Boku. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I stayed there after national service. Doing what? Um, so so this was between which years? Which years uh, were you there? I left university uh, after graduation in 85. Okay. okay. And then I went to Boko Secondary School. Mm. You know, posted yeah. national yeah. service. So 85 to 1995, I was, wow. I was in yes, Boko. Yeah. Although I took one year out to go and do some um, uh, what we call international guest teacher program, okay. which Ghana was doing with Denmark, okay. you know, to teach okay. over there yeah. on so, issues. So, so tell us about your time in Boko. Because you, know? yeah. you, you were supposed to be gone for a year and come back. I uh, had uh, uh, nine. No, no, I was not coming back. I was supposed to be gone for a year and determine whether I want to stay there or not. You know? so, <laughs> okay. so I, I went there and I saw that I mean, it, was, it was like everywhere else in, in Ghana. Mm. And... Um, in the place is, it's not like today's Boku. Yeah. Okay. I and mean, it was a very thriving business community. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was everything there. And we yeah. had a very nice, let's call it a southern community okay. there. You know, okay. Most of the friends, uh, may he so rest in peace, Dr. Debra, mm -hmm. um, he just died recently. He was in the hospital. And um, Dr. Koram, he's now Professor Koram okay. uh, of Noguchi. Okay. He was also there in Boku. Um, and a lot of very nice doctors. In fact, one of our friends became, joined the army mm. he, he okay. came, he, from Boku Hospital, joined mm. the army. So we were, it was a nice friend. You know, so I, I'm, I'm trying to connect the Boko and the Tamale, you know, um, oh, you are always addition. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe I'm, I'm subtracting and adding and multiplying and see all that. To see how the equation that, works. How the equation. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you are, you, are, you are not far from wrong, right? Mm. Um, there should, there's some connection because, again, I could see some uh, humility and I was looking out for those kind mm. of qualities from mm. uh, the ladies that I wanted around me yeah. and I found one in one of them and I thought that was a good pick. Super. You know, you know, so <laughs> the, so I, stand, I spent the time in Boku and we did quite a lot of things. Mm. In fact, um, even though I was in the secondary school, I did some work in the hospital as well. Okay. Okay. No, not as an employee, mm. but we set up the Boku nurses uh, Presbyterian Nurses Training College. Oh, wow. I see. Yeah, yes, and um, we we you know, I, I taught there for a while. Mm -hmm. I taught psychology mm -hmm. and uh, some of those things in that mm -hmm. nursing training school. But we, we laid the foundation mm -hmm. for it, ensured that they had a library and, and got everything okay. working for that nursing mm -hmm. training mm -hmm. to college. So. And besides that, I was also, a, 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 I'm, all, I'm still a Christian, but I was doing a lot more things around Christianity okay. around, around that time. So I could go into the villages, ministry uh, on Sunday, ministry-related yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, because of that, I was very instrumental in the setting up of a school okay. in one local village there. They are so... They still call me and tell me that is my school. I just wow. love. What's the name of the school? Uh, I think it's in a village called Zinyako. It's got a name, okay. but I don't know the name, mm. uh, the new name now. But mm. it's in mm. Zinyako, which is in Binduri constituency okay. now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, you know, we started from a small Lutheran church. Okay. And eventually, the school has become very big. They wow. build schools all around, wow. uh, classes all around it. Wow. And the school has really grown. I'm now trying very hard to see whether I can get uh, to the uh, what do you call it, the school feeding program to mm. extend uh, the feeding program yeah. to that school mm. in that far community. So, so let's find out from you with your interest in education. You know, trying to set up the nursing training college and now this school in Binduri area mm -hmm. and all. Where, where did that passion come from? Would you say that from your father's influence? 
Well, partly from my father's influence and partly uh, from some Christian uh, drive okay. mm -hmm. um, to make a lot of changes in the mm. people mm. I, I met and to try and relate with, I mean, all of them. I mean, mm. these were communities that like your idea, like success. You yeah. will not, you will, Ghanaians normally will not describe as success. Exactly. But these were very successful mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. nice, friendly, you know, opening their doors mm. to you. And you could very much mm. relate to them. I went to Boku when uh, they had their uh, crisis in 1985. Okay. Mm. Uh, a teacher in Boku Secondary School was killed. Um, but then, you know, that was during the rolling time. Mm. Uh, after that, everything went dead. And it remained dead until 1995 when the war started mm -hmm. um, again. Mm -hmm. So we had a very nice time going around with, with, with people. Yeah. Now, another interesting thing that happened within the Boku years was my um, becoming the first national president of the National Service Personnel Association. Okay. So okay. <laughs> we met at Gimpa and we, we, they voted for me. Mm -hmm. So I was, I'm, and people thought I was going to come back to Accra. No, I said, no, I'm going to stay in Boku, mm -hmm. do my mm -hmm. national service. NASPA yeah. president. NASPA, yes. NASPA president, yeah, the first NASPA, NASPA yeah. president. Yeah. Well, so I said, I'll stay there. That. Yeah, that was a huge know, success. Right? <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't I usually talk about it. I've given the baton to other people. So they, are, <laughs> they will take the glory. And we yeah. set up a very nice foundation then. Mm -hmm. We wrote the constitution. And we discuss it with um, some of the very strong um, leading uh, personalities at the National Service, mm. Mr. Peter Kwadube, and mm. at that time, mm. I became a member of the National Service um, Board, mm. you know, okay. by dint of my presidency. Yeah. And uh, had to sit in meetings with uh, the ones feared uh, by the Yabua. Mm. You know, when you mentioned yeah. the name, everybody was shaking, you know, <laughs> and I had meetings yeah. With, yeah. with them and all of that. So. We, 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 we did quite a lot of things to mm. put the National Service Personnel Association mm. in place. And I think it was somewhere in the 90s that I heard that they ran into crisis and the people who came after us decided to spend most of the money that we, we mm. left for them. Mm. And, uh, and, and so they have minimized uh, yeah. the effect of oh, NASPA yeah. in terms of how it could contribute strongly yeah. to mobilizing young persons for uh, national yeah. service and oh, ensuring yeah. that they are protected during the mm. time because mm. i mean we um, our salaries could stay till about four months before we were paid and yeah. you know we had to wait and you need to encourage people and you know, all of that mm. yeah. so mm. it was uh, an interesting time yeah. in, in, in boku until i left mm. in 1995. at what point did you make the journey to towards ges the headship of GS. Yes. Um, so um, somewhere around 1995, I went, uh, no, I think 1990, yeah, 1993, I went for this guest teacher program, came back, spent two years, and left okay. to go and do my master's. Okay. Uh, do my master's in development, administration, and planning. Okay. So when I finished, I thought I could come back to Boku. But mm -hmm. when did you, where did you do this? Uh, I did this in the University of Bristol. Okay. Yeah. So I, um, you know, when I came back, I had a very hostile reception coming back because somebody who was an engaging thought that, you know, this is the time to sit on the way. So I decided to leave there. I didn't contest it at all. Okay. I decided to leave the job for him. We should also do his part. So mm -hmm. I, I came back uh, down south okay. um, and worked a little bit with ISODEC. Oh. Uh, did some work with them, led a certain program that they were doing called the uh, PMT Participatory uh, methodologies, training, and uh, something, something mm. facility. Mm. You know, we did training <coughs> for people on participatory methodologies, okay. uh, like PRA, participatory research approach, okay. and all of those uh, transfer works mm. and those things. So, um, generally, it was um, it was interesting to do uh, some of those things. So. I realized that, no, I, I have to go back to the GES mm. to do things. So uh, after a while, uh, I thought my life was not in the NGO. Mm -hmm. um, so I moved uh, to the Ghana Education Service. And then I was posted to, um, to the Deputy Director General's office. Okay. okay. You know, now, I was posted not with a job title. Okay. So I had to create the job title mm -hmm. in that <laughs> office, you know. So I named myself uh, office manager okay. of the, for the, di mm. the deputy director general 
um, and I did everything for him. And he strangely, they tell me that oh, that was a very successful time mm. for a deputy director general because um, a lot of the things that he wa wanted to do mm. were, was, was in place. Mm. Yeah. And it was during that period that we did the first National Forum on Education. Okay. First okay. National Forum okay. on Education. The Minister of Education was uh, Spiel Gabra at the time. Okay. And that was the time we had started the free, not the free, the SSS uh, mm -hmm. thing. And mm -hmm. we were looking at the first yeah. batch and mm. their performance mm. and mm. we were analyzing yeah. that whole process and the four year talk yes. also came yeah. in. So this would be around 96, 97? Yeah, yeah almost 97, 98, 99. Right. Almost okay. 98, 99. Mm. So it was, it, it was uh, also a very interesting time. Mm. Um, we, we published a document called the, you know, the background to it and all of that. And yeah. it was, it's all available online. Now, so that, we finished with that. And uh, um, the, the, what I took out of that session was the fact that, well, this was a, uh, a, a place where I could start rolling. Mm -hmm. So we did quite a <coughs> number of things, uh, organizing what is now the teacher award and used to be the best teacher award oh, all, yeah. all over wow. the country. Okay. Right. Uh, we started the whole process of when, when a teacher excels at the interview mm. and they are shortlisted, mm. we go back to where they teach yeah. and try to find out about their community relations and their performance in their schools mm. and listen to them, mm. wow. you know, before we select the best teacher out mm. of that group mm. of people from the, the whole environment. Yeah. So, okay. It went well, and it was it continued mm -hmm. uh, after I left the place because the whole process of um, selecting those best teachers mm -hmm. was done by former directors and uh, other um, stakeholders in, right. in education to determine that individual. Mm -hmm. So it was it was um, um, an, an exciting time uh, during that period. So mm -hmm. it was from that period that I I started getting settled. Mm -hmm. During that period, we also um, did, there were a lot of things happening in education. Mm. It happened at the same time that the Get Fund issue yeah. came mm. up. You know, the Get mm. Fund was a fallout from that mm -hmm. national forum. Yeah. Okay. And then we, we did a Get Fund law and they did, um, they passed the law mm. defining what the Get Fund was going to do okay. for all the things. And then we also did um, what we call uh, a sector review. Okay. analysis of the whole education mm. sector, mm. looking at the mm. various segments mm. of it. So um, I became very, very close with um, one gentleman, now Professor Atu Esuman, okay. with whom I worked very, very closely. Mm. Uh -huh. So mm. he also provided a certain opening mm. for me. But um, between 1994, 1993 and 1994, yeah. I left the ministry on a study leave without pay okay. Okay. to go and do some work in South Africa mm. where I was an um, um, international training specialist uh, on volunteerism. Okay. Mm. So we did a lot of volunteering activities in South Africa, built schools um, you know, with the communities, mm. uh, help them to do agricultural projects you know, in order to ensure mm. that, you know, they could, um, and AIDS was very, very high yeah. at during time. at yeah. the time. And yeah. it, was, it was not a... You know, um, with, with almost everything you've said, I picked two things, volunteerism and mentorship. Because it looks like everywhere you were, you were looking at how to impact the society, how to do stuff, training people, awarding. <coughs> doing so much you know and so i'm not surprised that you were also very instrumental with what has now become the literacy challenge you know when city oh. used to do the right away contest yes, yes, share yes, your yes, experience yes. you know with well, us I, I was i was very happy to be involved in the literacy challenge in fact i saw it as one of the biggest breakthroughs of city um, those days city city FM, FM, yes. at the time um in terms of impacting education city fm had created a reputation of uh, focusing on education yeah. and uh, ensuring that we were able to do our things right. I remember one time I had um, a very, very interesting discussion with Bernard on, yeah. um, on the first EGRA that we, we did, mm. where we had 2% of children, and Bernard was questioning why, why, why are there 2% of old Ghanaian yeah. children only reading and all mm. that. But it, I didn't take, take it with a lot of uh, um, pinch of salt. Yeah. And I asked, 
him criticizing, criticizing what happened. Yeah. I saw it and I explained to him that we did the research ourselves mm -hmm. and yeah. we agreed. In fact, we didn't put it on the net. Yeah. Somebody took it and put it on the net, but yeah. we didn't have a problem with that action mm. because, I mean, we did it. We yeah. at that time were looking for solutions exactly. to how we can address mm -hmm. those, those issues. So um, it's not that um, we are acknowledging a failure, but yeah. we are looking at our challenges in order to find yeah. out the thing. So when they came up with the literacy challenge, mm -hmm. I said, brilliant, wonderful, yeah. brilliant idea. We will support it in every way and get people to. So we are very, yeah. very you know, engaged with the processes mm. Mm. and right from their launches, yeah. um, you know, in some of the schools, I've forgotten some of the schools, yeah. um, and then they are uh, stage to stage activities mm. within the literacy uh, challenge. challenge. And I think given the award at, at some one of the uh, programs that was uh, done uh, during that time. Mm. I've forgotten the name of the school. Yeah. And the, for the first time, we had a public school and I was very much interested wow. in public schools. <laughs> yeah. because I was yeah. now a public school person yeah. instead mm -hmm. of a private school. Yeah. 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 We had a public school person becoming second and mm. it was, wow. wow, a school in Ridge. So, mm. uh, Osu Ridge. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So, we were very, very excited and we rejoiced on those things. But, you know, uh, we were more happy because um, CTFM had chosen to go that path. Yeah. The only thing that we were a bit not very excited about, that we wanted a lot more injection into the public sector. Yeah. Okay. But we had more private sector mm. involvement in the literacy challenge than the public schools. Yeah. We are still trying to see whether we are going to fight for it or we are going to push for it. You but know, you know, this year's, this year's edition is on uh -huh. and we are at the stage three of the whole competition. Yes, yes I've and been so following the, it. The finals is just around the corner. Yes. Maybe it should be there. I, I, I know, think I'll, I'll, It's just I'll, happening I'll, across, you know, um, Crystal Palm. Oh, Hotel. just here. Just right. here. Oh, okay, good. Yes, yes. So I think it should be there. Yeah, That's 2nd well, yes. October. 2nd yes. October, yes. yes. I'll make yes. a date on that one. and 7th. 7th October. And I'll make a date and come. Uh, and, and, and participate in it. That'd be fun. Yeah. That's my corner. It, it'll, it'll be That'd great be to have you present one. the yeah. biggest trophy you know, <laughs> to the eventual winner. Now it's yeah. going to be trophy. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. A big trophy. check. Now, oh, no, now no. we are giving the check, we are giving medals, we are giving a trophy. Yeah. That is progress. Yes, exactly. I mean, you're taking it to another level yeah. altogether. That is success. Right? Yes, that is real success <laughs> and progress. Yes, yes, yes. Just share with us briefly before we wrap up the conversation. For you, let's take you back to the, question, the conversation we had earlier before we had this segment. Your definition of success. Okay. Considering the Ghana space in which we find ourselves and the hundreds and thousands of people who are watching us and different people's thoughts on success. Actually, um, the, the whole perception of success has been bastardized by what I refer to as the emergence of the prosperity doctrine. Mm. Mm. Now, and the unfortunate fact is that it began in the church. Yeah. Now, so the church succeeded in literally destroying the definition of success yeah. by linking it to pro prosperity. prosperity. Mm. Yeah. So it's very difficult. I mean, I mean, quoting scripture to the point where we say that, you know, if you are a child of God, your, your, your portion yeah. is not, I don't know. The blessings so, of God make the, it a man rich yeah, and yeah, has yeah, no yeah, sorrow. No, yeah. I mean, your portion is not anything that the, is yeah. The wealth of the wicked is you, laid up for the righteous. You hey, you know, <laughs> and all of that, you know. So yeah. we, we didn't under, understand the yeah. real dimensions of, of success. Mm. And for me, uh, success is, as both of you has, have, have actually pointed out, um, it's an indication of progress mm. in terms of the um, upliftment of the human being. Yeah. So, if, I mean, buying a big car, having a fat back account, building a big house are all sort of appendages yeah. of those things. They don't mark it. Mm. And the fact that you have opportunity to let whatever um, uh, resources that you have impact on society, yeah. you know, is a mark of success. Mm -hmm. You know, changing lives mm -hmm. and bringing joy and prosperity to people yeah. and, and the things that they do, you know, mm -hmm. are, are real marks of, um, of success, mm -hmm. which then begins to show that, yes, you are doing something good. Because, I mean, 
uh, the Bible says the poor will always be with us. That mm. alone indicates yeah. that prosperity equal to success is not, not a definition. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if the poor will always be to be with us, your responsibility is to always support the poor yeah. and to use whatever the Lord has breathed any one of mm. us yeah. to bring them up yeah. to the point yeah. where... So, so yeah. talking about progress and it. success and using what you have to help the poor, you know, so that we can all grow together. You know, the International Literacy Day is just around the corner. How mm. are we supporting each other, you know, in terms of literacy? Yes. Um, again, we have a lot of work to do, um, and I've been following a lot of discussions around literacy, I mean, education. Mm. I mean, recently UNESCO brought out um, a public contribution which said that um, people should con can contribute so that we do a new compact for education. Mm. You know, picking ideas from yeah. all over the world mm -hmm. and uh, so many, I don't know whether they are so uh, on it, but uh, I remember that I contributed and said that one of the first things we need to do is to begin to um, now, um, not demystify, but retranslate literacy okay. mm. in terms of helping people not to think that literacy is equal to English. Yeah. So that yeah. is that is a very important thing. That literacy is your ability to share and communicate information. Yeah. So share and communicate information um, means that uh, you are able to do the basic things you, that we link with literacy: mm. reading, mm. writing, mm. comprehension. Mm. Yeah. You know, mm. so that you you become a very very functional mm. uh, person. Mm. So in, in Ghana, since 1967, we have. Um, the what used to be the um, what do you call it the those who do the non-formal okay. non-formal now it mm. has, the name has changed to complementary education agency yeah. okay uh -huh. so it used to be non-formal they were leading that work on um, literacy yeah. so even today I know that they are in OT celebrating the literacy day and mm. trying to show the yeah. uh -huh. so the idea was to educate a lot of people who for one reason or the other, could not have the opportunity to go into formal mm, schooling. Okay. And even at ages beyond uh, the school going age, okay. they can submit themselves to some classes to be able yeah. to become what we call functional citizens. Okay. So this year, we are continuing that one okay. within the confines of the Sustainable Development mm. Goals. Okay. And to remind people that it's lifelong learning. You are not too old to learn at yeah. any time that or if you are 98, you can still yeah. go into school yeah. and uh, uh, go, either go into school or engage in an educational mm -hmm. activity mm -hmm. be a that student. will be a mature student yeah. that will enable you to be able to share and communicate information mm -hmm. among uh, your community. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Really, really feel mm -hmm. privileged and honored that you could yeah. join us this morning yeah. for a wonderful conversation. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you right. very much. Thank you. Right. It's been a pleasure. Uh, having the opportunity to talk a little bit about my life. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Have been so, inspired. Yeah. That's good. <laughs>